What's up everybody, True Boxing here. Thank you for coming back to get hit with the truth. So today, we're doing the um, 2021 year-end top tens continue with my number five middleweight in the world right now, Arislandi Lara. Arislandi Lara entered the year not ranked at middleweight. He was ranked at junior middleweight, 154, his career long weight class. And um, in 2021, he decided to make a jump to middleweight and challenge for the vacant WBA regular title at middleweight, which I was kind of surprised by that. Um, and he would take on Cornflake Lamana, excuse me, which nobody thought Lamana was going to beat uh, Lara, but Lara testing out a new weight class, uh, people were curious to see how he was going to do with that extra weight added on top of him, especially at his age. So Lara went in and blasted um, Cornflake Lamana with a, a beautiful left hand that put him down hard and finished him. And, and that was in one round into the fight. And Arizlani Lara became the WBA regular champion at middleweight. Well, shortly after, the um, that took place in May. Shortly after, the WBA uh, decided that they were going to start consolidating all their world titles down to one champion per division. So, with Lara was still technically the regular champion at 154, and he was now the regular champion at 160 as well. So the the WBA forced Lara to choose a division that you know to choose one title that he and in division he was going to stay at. And I was kind I was somewhat surprised that he chose middleweight. You know, because he's at that older age, but he didn't care. So heading into 2022, I'm curious to see what what opportunities Arizlani Lara is going to get. Now, let's look at his stats. His stats are, you know, he's the regular champ. He's 38 years old now. So this guy's up there in age, you know, and, um, you know, he's still a very good boxer. But I'm interested in seeing how the heavier, the heavier guys are going to do against him how you know the heavier shots are gonna uh how he's gonna take those you know that's one that's one thing that i'm very interested in seeing um overall he's 28 he's 28 and 3 with three draws and 16 knockouts doesn't have anything on the schedule as of right now which hey get used to that most of the time he doesn't he's always waiting around and then we get surprised when he, when he actually schedules a fight. But um, one thing I know for sure with the WBA is with them consolidating all their belts, Lara should be getting the next crack at the WBA title. Although the WBA has already approved their super champion, Ryota Murata, to fight Triple G Gennady Golovkin in a unification bout. Now that fight's supposed to take place in March or April. So I'm very interested in seeing if um, Lara is gonna get a crack at the winner. Now. I hope he stays active and fights before that. And, you know, looking at some of the options, there's not a lot of them, I'm going to be honest. But there are a couple. One of, a, one of the options are Jamal Charlo. If Charlo doesn't get the fight in May with Canelo, then I think it's possible Lara and Charlo can lock horns. You know, it's, it wouldn't be a unification bout, but Lara would get a crack at the world title, at the WBC title. There's also Carlos Adames. If Carlos Adamas kind of gets left out in the wind from the WBC title picture, they're both with the PBC. Why not make this fight? It, it, it would make sense. But I really think Lara's kind of the odd man out. But I, but I hope Lara takes some risk and other guys take some risk to fight Lara because at 38, is Lara still that that uh, awkward you know threat that he used to be? I don't think he is. And I hope he gets an opportunity in 2022 at middleweight. I really do. Um, I would like to see him fight the winner of Murata in Triple G, even though I don't think it's going to happen. But I think he's going to hold on to his belt, maybe make an optional defense in the first half of the year. And I think he's going to hold on to his belt to see if Triple G, you know, if Triple G beats Rio to Murata or even Murata beats Triple G. I think there's a good chance the winner moves up to super middleweight to challenge Canelo in September. If that happens, Lara gets upgraded to full champion, and you know, and he can do whatever he wants after that because he's got a he's got a legitimate uh, middleweight title. So um, I think Lara needs you know he's gonna be patient. He's used to that, but everything as usual with a lot of these fighters that uh, float around the, whatever division Canelo fights in, 
this is a uh, Lara is definitely directly in, uh, affected by whatever Canelo does next. So we should know in February what Canelo is planning on doing. If he's serious about fighting Jamal Charlo, which is the recent news that that's what is going to happen, that he's likely going to fight Charlo in May, but we don't know. If that happens, then all other things start falling into place, and we're probably going to know what Lara is going to do in the first half of the year alone. And we might even know what happens with the WBA championship going forward, uh, especially after Triple G and Murata decide and hopefully March or April. So we'll keep you posted, but that's the 2021 year-end top 10s continuing with my number nine, number five middleweight in the world right now, the WBA regular champion, Arislandi Lara. I hope you guys enjoyed it. True boxing, you've been hit with the truth.